So now I'm going to show you a couple ways that we can use Digo uh, to make your life a little bit easier. So let me go ahead and start Chrome here. And I'm just going to find a page. Well, actually, I've already found a page that I want to look at. And we'll mark it up. We'll use Digo here. So this is five ways to use Apple TV in the classroom. So I'm going to scroll up here and find the text. Apple TV has been around for a while now. You are the front of the room with Apple TV. You don't need to stand. So let's say that's valuable to me. That's that's content that I want. So I'm going to come over here to my Digo. I'm going to click it. I'm going to click Annotate. And that's going to bring up my little tools, my annotation tools. i got my highlighter and my sticky note. So I'm going to highlight here. Um, I find that with highlighting, if you start from the back and go toward, start at the end of what you want to highlight and then go to the beginning of what you want to highlight, um, that works best. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to highlight up. With Apple TV, you don't need to stand at the front of the room. You can move and sit with your students. And so it's highlighted it now. Um, let's say I also want to put a note on this page. Proof that Apple TV is great in the classroom. And then I'll post this. And so it shows my little sticky note here. And I can keep going on this and I can I can highlight some more. Maybe I maybe I want a different color, so I'll click the little arrow here and I'll click blue. And I'll say once your uh, instant feedback. Even if you only have one iPad in the classroom, you have the option of going on to any student to take a video of their work and pushing it onto the board for them to see. So I'll highlight that in blue. Uh, let's see, I want green for the next thing. Um, knowing it has a real impact on motivation with the group. Okay, so I'll highlight that. So now I have I have a yellow highlight, I have a blue highlight, I have a green highlight, and I can do this as much as I need to, or as little as I need to. Um, when I'm finished using that, I'll click my X here. Uh, now, I've highlighted this page. I want to remember that I've highlighted this page. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to tag. With Chrome, it's tag, you tag it. So I'm going to click tag. It's going to show them the URL of the site. It's going to show the title of the site. Um, I'm going to give it a quick description using Apple TV is wonderful for all. Um, and then I'm going to use some tags. These are ones that I've used before. Here's the ones that they recommend for this. Google Read Alert, Apple. Uh, I'll put Apple TV um, guide on the side all right and so it's gonna it's gonna bookmark that now where do i go to find it um, in chrome if i click this i can then go to down here to my library um, if i click the two down arrows it'll give me more options i have my network my options i can sign out um, i can see the groups that i belong to uh, anything that's unread but right now i'm going to go to my library as soon as I get to my library, it's going to show that I'm logged in, and here's my article. Five ways to use Apple TV in the classroom. When I click on that, it's going to bring this article back up. And as I scroll up, I'm going to get my highlights. There's my blue. There's my green. Here's my sticky note. If I hover over it, it's going to show. There it is. Now, I've done all this with Chrome, so let's go on, get out of Chrome here, and let's go into Firefox. And Firefox, we installed the Power Toolbar. So, same thing here. I can go to, let's go back to Edudemic. Um, look for an article. Here's the article I was just reading. Six interactive storytelling apps for younger students. Okay, so here are Storia and Story Kit and Story Park and I Tell Story, Toontastic, Scribble Press. So it's got a bunch of these. Um, I want to bookmark this. Click bookmark. Once again, it gives me the URL. 
it gives me the title. I can type a description of story tools for younger students. And then tags, apps, storytelling, iPads, digital storytelling, save. All right, same thing. I can, uh, I can go to read later unread um, here's a tool that all of, all of the tools have it's called capture let's say there's something on this page that I really I really like well first let me find something that I really like let me find an image or something so let me take this uh, infographic and I'm gonna click capture and then I'm just gonna draw a square around it uh, put a box blue box around it and then click save and so it's going to say uploading and it says done. Check captured image in your Digo library. Okay, so I'll click here on unread. And here it's got these things that show what's unread. Um, and I'm just going to go to Digo, to my library. It's going to take me to my library. And here is this that I just captured. Here's the article that I just captured. There's the whole article. Um, if I go back to my library, here's the previous one that I found on Apple TV. Now, once again, remember, I'm using a different browser, so it might as well be a different computer. Um, but it's still going to have my sticky note. It's still going to have all my highlights as long as Digo is installed on that particular device. Now, let's go back out one more time so I can show you one more time with uh, Safari. And this, is, this would be the same on uh, an iPad. If I go to Digo, D I I G O dot com, I should already be logged in. There's my name. Here's the picture that I just got. Let's go back to the Apple TV in the classroom. And now, this does not show my highlights or my note because remember, in, in Safari, I don't have this tool the same way. It's just a little JavaScript function. So if I click Digolet and then I click off of it, now it's going to show. There's my highlight. There's my, I'm sorry, there's my sticky note and here are my highlights. You have to make the Digolet active by using it once. Once you do that, then you will have all this stuff. Um, not ideal, still useful, but you just need to remember to do it. If you're going to be going for, on a hunting mission for things that you want to keep, then you need to remember to activate your Digolet first. Um, and those are the main ways um, that you can use those, those tools. I'm sure that as you use it, you'll find other ways. When you come into Digo, you're going to notice that there's four areas here. There's my library. And so these are all the things that I have saved off since I've been using Digo. Um, if I don't, here I have the Digo let, the tool, um, and let's say I don't want that. So I'm going to put a check beside it. And here are my actions. It says more actions. And when I click the little arrow, it's going to say send to, publish to a blog. Say I want to put it on my blog, I can do that. Uh, I can make it public, I can make it private, I can delete it. Um, and let's say that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete it. Boom. It's going to say, are you sure? I'm going to say OK, and there it is. So let's now say the harsh reality of the classroom of the future. Let's say I want to share it with somebody. So I'm going to click it, and I have some groups. I have a Common Core group. I have a Simi Valley Unified School District Common Core Standards Resources group, and I have Teaching and Learning with Web 2.0. So let's say I want to do this one. So I'm going to click on it. It's going to say Processing. It's going to save it off to that group. So now when I come over here to my groups and I go into Simi Valley Unified Common Core Resources, here it is. And I've shared it off. And I it shows that I made a sticky note on there. Isn't this great? And there it is. It's, sh it's shared off. It's that easy. It's really simple. Um, not very difficult. So I'm going to go back here, and that was my library. So my library just stores all my things and gives me some tools that I can do with these things. Uh, my network. This is where it becomes kind of like Facebook. I have 
my account here and I have people that I, I am following and people that are following me. And as of now, nobody's following me, but that'll change over time. So these are some of the things that I have shared and other people in my group have shared. Um, I can hover above them and it'll say who it was that shared them. Um, and if they would have put a picture like I did, then you would see who they did. Yeah. It's always a good idea on these kind of things to put some kind of avatar that represents you so that people can see quickly who you are and uh, what you are doing. All right, my groups, that's once again, these are the groups that you decide. If I want to add a group, um, I can go in here and I can search for groups. Uh, let's say I want to search for an ed tech group. So I type in ed tech and it says search my library, search community library. So I'm going to look for groups. So find groups interested in ed tech. I'll click it. And then it's going to find all of the ed tech groups that it knows about. So here's Digo, ed tech. There are one, there's one member. Maybe that's not the group I want to join. I want to look for groups that are going to be useful. Here's a thousand members, 1800 members. So I'm, you just find a group of things that you're going to, be interested in. So, you know, Common Core State Standards. Here's some more Common Core groups. Um, lots of different things that you can do with groups here. Um, and community is like what's popular. What's good, what's popular, what people are using. Um, so right now, 109 people are sharing how search works. 80 people are sharing 36 things every 21st century teacher should be able to do. So I'll click through and I'll be able to go look at this. Okay. Now, with my Digo toolbar here in Chrome, um, I can annotate, and that's my highlighter. Usually. Sorry, the extension is not designed to run in this page. All right. So I guess it's not going to work here for this. But I think I can still tag it. That's bookmark it. And I guess it's not going <laughs> to Great. Thanks, Digo. So I'm going to go back. Maybe if I click on the link here, it'll just take me straight to that page. Now let's see if I can do it. Annotate. All right, yeah, so here it is. So I got my highlighter. Uh, select the right platform to communicate. Send large files. Take a screenshot. Hit the print screen button. Okay, and there's my highlight. So I can highlight. Let's say I want to tag this, and this is my on the on Chrome for whatever reason it's not bookmark, it's tag. So I can tag it with online protection. Hey, look, there's SIPA. I use that. But here's the one that I recommended: 21st century skills, technology, ed tech, teacher. Uh, once again, I can put whatever I want in here. Um, I can share it with a group and then save and that's that's that and if I want to go back to Digo I just simply type uh, well with with the Chrome one I can just click my library here and it'll take me straight to my library so this is the one I just did this is the one I did when we began I can go to my groups and see the one that I just shared that with my group here 36 things every 21st century teacher be able to do so Digo is a really useful tool. As you start using it, you'll kind of learn more as you go. As you start sharing things with this group or other groups that you either create or join, uh, as you can see here, um, this group uh, is created by me. I'm the owner. Anyone can use it because it's a public group. Um, I created it just to be a place to store Common Core resources. So I hope that you get a chance to use it and that you can uh, make use out of it. Um, once again, Digo, great tool. can really help you to be more productive. It can save you time, um, and it can help you store all those things that not only you, but also friends and other colleagues will be sharing. Um, all right. Thank you very much. I hope that you enjoyed this, and I hope you get something from it.